And we have all, all the other documents that you gave me yesterday and today, too. Steve has just gotten home and he's downloading them now. Anybody have any questions? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about the phrase uh, in the, the post obit bonds, and I'm, I'm not seeing how it applies yet, but I'm, I'm sure if I study it more. Uh, All right. There's a, there's a phrase in here. post obit bond is the kind of bond uh, whereby the obligor of the state agrees in consi- that in consideration for payment to him of a sum of money by the obligee, he, the obligor state, will, upon receipt thereof from the estate of the person now living from whom he, he expects to inherit, to pay a larger sum exceeding the legal rate of interest. And that's the larger sum that's exceeding the legal rate of interest. I don't see how it fits in what we're doing yet. Well, legal rate of interest is normally more than 1%, okay? Okay. I've gone over that in the past. We're talking about the uh, postal savings accounts and everything. Hmm. The legal rate basically is less than 1%. Therefore, you don't have to pay any taxes on it. Okay. Okay. Exceeding that, basically, then you have to pay taxes upon what is over and above that minimum uh, rate. Okay, that you're may entitled be... to you're entitled to a fee for any usage of something that you rent out. Right. Okay. Okay, I think I, I just arrived on the group just after you did those postal savings accounts. So I understand that now. Nobody has any questions? We're, I'm still downloading, Patrick. I'm gonna. I'm opening up. I got one. I got them all downloaded. I'm opening. Well, there's over seven people on the call here. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is Celine. I have just downloaded the documents myself, so I don't have questions yet. I just need to understand it all and read it through. There's and 14 have, people on the call now. Um, and I have to believe I have a better mic this time. Everybody can hear me. Oh, you're fine now. Much better than before. Okay. Muting now. Okay. (laughs) I guess I'm still, uh, Patrick, I'm still puzzling on exactly what to put on the back of the certificate of live birth besides. I pay any bank. I would presume that that, that should include the amount that I want to take out at at the time and uh, a direction to put it in the account, at least that much. It's just about like what we've been, like those other bills and stuff that I've posted up there. You just take some of the same terminology, but you would make it payable to any bank. Okay. Pay to any bank. Instead uh-huh. of your name in there, you put pay to any bank. Okay, okay. I get to, I get to get it now. So it's where on, on, on the front where we, we say uh, where we want to pay to, uh, we're saying pay any bank. Not yes, it. on... Okay. When you put this, when you put the template on the back, you would say that, okay? Okay. You don't need to put everything else on there because you don't need to have your address and everything on there. 
Because it goes to the bank. That you're going to have it deposited into your bank account. Right. Okay. Got it. Um, question, where is that, on which document is that template on? Past templates, okay. There's one template there that was I put, sent to Tom the night before last, okay, or last okay. night, and it's with uh, uh, the part three or part two of the uh, document. Did you break that out, Tom? No, I didn't break the document out. I, I I will do that. I was having trouble with the uh, PDF stuff. Okay, well, there's basically okay, that's fine. I'll, a I'll cover find sheet, okay, that goes with to the court that I was sending into the court. And then basically the next page was a template that would go on the back of the uh, certificate of uh, DD-214 certificate that I had. That you could take that and basically the past templates that I've had up there you guys got to be creative, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that's page two God of the post damn it. You know, post-opus. this is ridiculous. I have given you more templates and more shit out here than anybody else has in this whole damn deal. <laughs> I showed you how to write a damn check, how to write a bond, how to write a bill of lading. It's not that damn hard. Okay, I've modified them over the years. But Jesus Christ, come on, oh, people. Okay, so this would be basically put a check on the back of the bond, uh, the birth certificate. Got it. You're put a bill of lading. Basically what I had there on that one, something you're, you're cashing this in as a, this is a bank note. Okay. Okay. That certificate of live birth is a bank note. And you're coming in as the obligee, and you're com- going in, and this is a bond post-obit or a post-obit bond, okay? One dictionary has it one way, the other one has it another way. But it also has a post-obit note, a promissory note payable, a specific time after the death of the maker. The maker, maker was your peon. Peon is person with the RS taken out of it because it's a corporate peon to you and he has no resident, residency or residential sovereignty. <laughs> Because he's held in the United States or the state of by the 14th Amendment to jump over the 13th Amendment servitude bar. Okay, that's that's page two of the document that I labeled post obit bond of public credit. Thank you very much. Also with bearer bonds of public credit. Yeah, and then the last three pages were uh, the definitions uh, under status of or state of admiralty parent, part two. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, uh, when, when I, I do the doc, I'll, I'll break I'll break that out separately, and uh, yes, I'll, I'll probably put all the admiralty parent stuff together in one one document. Yes, and basically, you can even set, change this last one, uh, this number four, into uh, stating that it's uh, the rules of the peon slash post orbit game. The definitions about peon, peonage, person, personal service contract, person beyond the sea, beyond the seas, beyond the seas, RS. Okay, I had to look that one up in Oxford Dictionary to find out sort of like what R-S-S dot 
or r dash r dot s dot met, and it was in there as royal service or royal sovereign. Well, that here in America would be residentiary sovereign because we are the crown in America, the sovereign of America, yes. we the people. It even says that in Bouvier's that the sovereignty rests with the people. Mm-hmm. That Bill Turner basically brought that out in his video. He also brought out this one-page document about what uh, the Rothschild agent uh, house said that they were going to do. It's more detailed than the previous house posting that was up there. If need be, you can send that into the court, too. Say, here, who are you defending, America or uh, the Rothschilds? Right. The bankers. And it's certainly very much public record. <laughs> no, you got to start standing up, basically. That's what... Uh, I don't know. You need to look up the definitions of all words. When it says C, something at the end of a definition, and it references... Another word or another phrase, go and look that damn word up or that phrase up. Like post orbit in Ballantyres or Bouvier's, it references catching bargain and Macedonian decree. Well, basically, they will tell you something when you go and look at them. Fungible goods. Well, what is fungible? It's something that has to be returned in a like nature. Equivalent. So if you cash in one silver dollar, you're going to get 18 or whatever Federal Reserve dollars back. Just like if you go overseas and you cash in one dollar, you're going to get uh, in Japanese. You're going to get a uh, two hundred yen or something. Mm-hmm. You've got to get the conversion, the equivalent of any other thing in like unit. Now, basically, that Bill Turner was wrong in several items, okay? That certificate of live birth did not create a dead person. It created a person without the RS, a peon. Growing up, didn't they always call you a little peon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you were a little debtor to your parents. The peon is one who owes a debt to someone else. Now, the peons died in a state of post-orbit, orbit, at the age of 12 for the church, for the baptismal certificate, at the age of 21, for the state certificate of live birth, and at the age of 25, for the military DD-214, military discharge certificate. That means you couldn't claim those before at that point in time. It 
But now the peon is dead in a state of post-orbit. Now you can come in and claim it. That's simple. Mm I haven't got too much more to say. If you guys want to say anything, say it. Ask. I try to tell you. You need to ask if you want to receive anything. Well, you, you cleared up for me the questions that I had. I, I, I need to go back and work through it again. See if I have yes, you more. need to read these documents over and highlight them. Right. That's what everybody needs to do is basically take a highlighter pen, read through the thing, highlight what you want to remember, point out, and then highlight what you want to check out also. Right. But the definitions are pretty damn self-explanatory. Beyond the seas, beyond the limits of the United States, for the purposes of a statute of limitation, beyond the limits of the state. By utilizing the Social Security account, by utilizing the driver's license, and certificates of title, you're keeping your dead person alive. Mm. Your peon in a state of basically claiming that he's still alive. You need to let him die. You don't need all this other stuff. But you were the one that loaned your assets to the government to begin with. The government, you loan, you put your assets into your corporate person, your corporate peon, okay, your prodigal son, he turned around and gave them over to the state. The state is now the obligator back to us. We're the obligee. This is the returning of the prodigal son scenario that Jesus talked about in his parable. He died at sea. Now you're going to bring him home and bury him on the land. In track and field, basically what you have. In high jump, you had a bar you had to jump over. And they kept raising the bar until basically they came up with a new one to where they had pole vaulting to clear the bar. And see, that's what the 14th Amendment did. They had to find a way to jump over the 13th Amendment, which was about servitude, involuntary servitude. They talk about voluntary servitude, but basically all servitude even involuntary, voluntary is really involuntary servitude because nobody in their right mind 
would ever volunteer to be a slave. The 13th Amendment came about because they had to, uh, they just brought in all the other laws that they had dealing with uh, peonage. Servitude. So they consolidate and consolidated it into the Thirteenth Amendment that totally forbid it in this country. No questions, comments, rebuttals? Yeah, I like this thing that says uh, the case law in the United States. This is in the Wikipedia corporate personage document that um, in 1818, the United States Supreme Court called Dartmouth College versus Woodward. Uh, the opinion of the court after mature deliberation is that its corporate charter is a contract, the obligation of which cannot be impaired without violating the Constitution of the United States. This opinion appears to us to be supported by reason and by the former decision of the court. So underneath there's a bunch of uh, stuff about it, but um, I guess it's all explanatory underneath. Um, and earlier it said that in in Delaware and and New Jersey that they can there was no limits on corporate creations or uh, anyone could form a corporation without any authorization. So that's why they probably picked Delaware. Yeah, that's why so many people use Delaware. Like offshore or something, it has parts of Delaware or islands and stuff. I mean, I heard that as a rumor. Fourteenth Amendment does not insulate corporations. Okay. No, see, in America, you are a residentiary sovereign, as you are the sovereignty of America. In the movie that basically that Bill Turner has, they talk about the crown. Yeah. Okay. Well, the crown here is that we are the sovereignty of America. The people are. The living. And that's why when they created the 14th Amendment, they created another person with that certificate of live birth. He was born, he was birthed, but he was birthed as a corporate peon. Because he's a peon to us. He's the debtor to us. Hmm. So he is our peon. He's not their peon. They just are utilizing our assets. They're not a true creditor. The United States or the state of. They're just holding our assets. And they are obligated to pay the shit back to us <laughs> when we demand it. Mm -hmm. Post COVID. Yeah, and especially when it's it's dead after age twenty one, it's dead, so we have the right to like you say, collect or salvage our assets. You have the right to cash those things in. You can either send them into the, and see, people have gone to the banks, and the banks have said, oh, yes, we've seen these before, but they don't tell you how to process them. You have to figure that one out yourself. 
you have to make it pay to any bank. And I put the definition up there about pay any bank. The answer has been in the dictionaries. I've told you this all along. Right. You just have to keep looking until you find the right answers. It's all in the words. And that Bill Turner, he's on to that too. He also does what I do. He keeps sending shit in, and she says, sooner or later, someone's going to stick. Like throwing shit at the wall. Someone's going to stay on the wall. Yeah, he talked about his form 1482 or something like that, the V1482 or RV or something. And uh, that sounds kind of like what the certificate of live birth is here. Yes, it is. And they wouldn't give it to him. They, it's like, so he's going to... He wasn't doing it right. He didn't address the post-orbit or the peonage. And basically, from Australia and from New Zealand, they should have known that one right off the bat because basically, what the hell is Australia? A penal colony. Yep. Same thing yeah. with New Orleans. That was a penal colony. Yeah, and you're definitely a peon as a as a uh, as a as a uh, whatever they call it, trustee or inmate. Inmate, you know, inmates or peons. You're a debtor to a creditor. That's all that a peon is. And you're not the peon. Your fictional person is the peon because he lost his corporate, his residency, uh, sovereignty, his RS. You take person, you take RS out of person, and you leave peon. Oh, that's perfect definition right there. Yeah, I mean, basically, when I saw the... Peon, I said, wait a minute, that's person without the RS. Then I had to find out what what were they taking out of Peon. Well, they were taking out the residency sovereign. The residentiary sovereign. Yeah, that's it. That's the guts right there. That's the main crankshaft there, it looks like. Yeah, and then basically he's held within the limits of the seas. Okay, he's not beyond the limits of the seas. Okay, person beyond the seas. Then you look up the definition of beyond seas, beyond the limits of the United States. For the purpose of a statute limitation beyond the limits of the state. Well, what are they talking about? The corporation limits. Not the land limits. Hmm. They're talking about commercial commerce. The seas of commercial commerce. The Vatican, the Church of Rome, basically is the maritime merchant law givers. This goes along with the expatriation. They're coming out of their limits. We 
which is being held at sea and in the corporate commerce. Now you're coming onto the land, and you're now a fictional be person. Private. We're already on the land, okay? Yeah, yeah. We just have to make the separation that, hey, we're not that person. We're the sovereignty of America. And then you start turning all your damn documents in that basically put you under the control of the Rothschilds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give to Caesar what Caesar's. No, you don't give shit to them. <laughs> well, well, give their right damn up. document back to them, and that's it. That's what I mean. You give them their documents back, right? Yeah, they're, they're bullshit. Not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're shit paper. Right. <laughs> I think we should put the uh, the the Wendell House. Uh, speech on there, too, just to show that it is a conspiracy. Well, if you've got a court case, send it in to them. Yeah. Say, here, this is part of my affidavit. I understand what the hell is going on here. Now, are you going to support the America, or are you going to support the Rothschild bankers? This whole scenario is the Babylonian system of control. It took Jesus, it took Daniel, it took Moses. They didn't figure it out overnight. Hell, Jesus went to the temple when he was 12 years old to try and claim his stuff, but when did, how did he finally get it? He wasn't until he was 33 years old. And then they were fearful of losing their position, so they conspired to kill him. They didn't kill him. No. They had to give him his assets. Oh, right. Basically, right. Pilot said, I find no fault with this man. Now give him his shit. <laughs> so they took him back into the other court, and they crucified his contracts. Right. When you're dead, you're dead, okay? Yeah. All this bullshit about coming to life after you're dead and everything, that's all in your imagination. It's a pipe dream. Somebody's smoking some good hashish or something. <laughs> I mean, it's just like a bad dream. It can scare the shit out of you. even cause you death in your dreamland. And you won't wake up from it. But when you, if you do wake up, basically it's gone. Yeah, you figured that out when you looked up the words like uh, barbarous, who meant son of God also. Barbar, bar, 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 barbarous? Is that it? Barbarous. Barbarous. Yeah. Yes, barbarous, right. whatever. It wasn't me, it was one of the other guys on the call. He uses a strong concordance to go and check out what some of the words mean uh, in there to get a different understanding looking at them. Crucified is fictional, and then he went back to the living. He rose into the living. Yeah, but basically, everything was right here. <laughs> 
Okay, you just need to call it out that he was a peon. He's dead now, and basically, I want my shit. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't produce any sperm, so there's no offspring. There's no issues associated from him or her. So basically, there's no errors to him, so everything has to revert back to the master. Pretty simple, straightforward. And you put your shit together, and basically, no damn court is going to be able to counterdict you because you're the dictator. I put the definition for dictator up there in uh, volume or part three. You're the dictator of your estate. You're the father of your estate. And a father is the dictator of the family. And I said before that a woman has to stand by the book of Ruth. That's where her protections were at. But either she stands under her father, her dead husband, or her husband as her protector. But in the military wedding that took place, and that's what I've got the definition of that up there, too, Mm -hmm. that you created with that certificate of live birth, you created a bastardly child. So it was a forced wedding, military wedding, that took place. The state became the mother, the purse holder. There's another term for that, but I won't mention that one. Does it go with the word mother? It goes with the word female. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The depository side of a female. Yeah, I know that. Okay. We call it the unit. No, you call it something else. One of those four-letter words. It's the main unit. Okay, we'll get off that subject right now. You need to go (laughs) over this and study what I've put out here. Right, that's some good stuff. The answer is right here. You could either turn around and walk these right into your federal court in the morning and have the item taken completely down because that certificate of live birth is a bank note. It's a, and it's under state seal. And anything that's under state seal is saying that they owe you a credit. You can put the value to that credit. Now, like on the certificate of title to your vehicle, normally the value is sitting right there in front of you. Because you put down the new cost of that vehicle. Twenty thousand. 35000 whatever. That's what you can cash that certificate in for. And it's under a state seal.
you turn that in and then say, okay, I want the title to uh, that vehicle transferred over to me. Me, myself, and I. And then your name, Mr. Whatever. Semicolon, your last name. Your presumed last name. All these bills that you get from your credit card companies, from your other places, they're all credits that are owed to you. They may or may not be under a seal. That's what the definition says. It may or may not be under a seal. When you go down and read about the post-orbit, bond and the post-orbit, yeah, post-orbit bond and uh, post-orbit. Yeah, I think it's important, like you said, that uh, all of our licenses and uh, titles and all that is just keeping the peon alive. Yeah, and you can turn around and cash those all in. Now, if they don't cash it in, basically you've got to resort. Because like what I put on the document, basically the post-orbit consigned obligors, the United States and the state of Iowa, to settle the debts of the res estate of my U.S. maritime merchant man, bastardly peon, after the U.S. maritime merchant warehousemen have deducted and settled all federal and state just assigned salvage liens, warehouseman liens, and custom fees. Mm -hmm. The attorneys and these banks, what are they doing? They're placing salvage liens against your assets. But we don't want to mention salvage. Yes, you do. Oh, you do? Okay. You've got to clear those salvage liens. Those are the highest liens out there in maritime law. Okay. Now, if they do not comply, okay, with your request, Mm -hmm. you can make a statement. A salvage lien will be filed against your post-orbit key on if my will is not honored. Hello? Yes? I think you might answer the wrong phone. Yeah, you can file a post-orbit lien, or a salvage lien, against their post-orbit peon. You're not filing against the living person. You're filing against their peon. Now, that will go against their account that is being held at uh, the United States or the state. Right. And this, this would be for the company's uh, who are borrowing the, from the treasury. This would be and, for even a judge in that damn court. Oh, okay. If they don't comply, Thomas. Okay, I got it. Anybody that interferes. Uh, I was thinking in terms of the utility bills. Yeah, if they don't comply, then you can file a salvage lien 
which is the highest lien in maritime law against their post-orbit peon that they don't know that they've got one. Mm -hmm. So you're not filing against them, the living, the sovereign, you're filing it against their peon. Peon slash person, yeah. Yeah, by way of the damn uh, assets that are being held by the United States or the state. Yeah, you're not filing against the corporation, okay? You're filing against the player in the corporation. Yeah, you pierce the veil. And see, then they can't say that you're harming them because you're not. Right. And see, that's what all these attorneys and everything have been doing all this point in time. They've been filing salvage liens. Ah, uh, that's what you meant when you described what bankruptcy attorneys are doing. Yes, okay. it's salvage liens. That's what these third-party debt collectors try and do. They try and get in on a salvage lien. Bill Turner didn't have... He was talking about uh, uh, distress liens. But a salvage lien is higher than that. Because basically everything out here is in maritime law. And the United States operates in a completely different maritime system than most of the other uh, English con countries. We have our own system of maritime laws. That was the way that they skirted around admiralty. Hmm. Because the states cannot hear admiralty cases. The state courts can't hear admiralty cases. All admiralty cases have to go to the federal district courts. But they can hear maritime cases, merchant seamen cases, at the state level when you are committing an act against the merchant vessel, the state merchant vessel. And then all your court cases are not civil, criminal, or anything like that. They're really a uh, special, a summary court-martial. Because it's in maritime law. You will very seldom ever get to a uh, the general court martial because that takes five judges. And a special court martial takes three. I think that's the way it, I had it in the definitions. That was appeal in part court. three. Appeals courts have three, normally. Yes, if you're going to appeal a military, and they have military appeal courts. So all these appeal courts are really maritime appeal courts. Mm -hmm. That's what they did in 1938 here in this country. That what uh, Bill Turner was talking about, he was talking about in 1946 that they revamped the
the court system over there in New Zealand in, in 1946. Well, they revamped them in somewhat in alignment to what we were doing here in this country. So if you follow the path, it's it's all out there of how all this stuff came about. And it doesn't come about overnight. They have to slip it in slowly. So sort of like, how do you cook a frog? Mm-hmm. You slowly turn up the heat. Now, if they threw all this stuff at us, we would have been jumping out of the frying pan a hell of a long time ago. And most of the damn legislatures never would have let half this stuff get through. But when they slip it in on the legislators, bits and pieces here and there, they don't really see what's entirely going on. And then when they get bombarded with so damn much bullshit... And they're out whining and dining and uh, getting uh, out there for their trying to keep in office scenarios. Basically, their mindset isn't on what it should be. Yeah, and after they did get control of those reins and those funds, all they did was go around destroying and wrecking countries and trying to control resources and such. They didn't really do anything for the benefit of humanity. No. They go out and fight their own wars and put up their own defenses to try and maintain their power. Right. Destroy other countries. That's what the Babylonians did a long time ago. Medes and Persians took over for them. Then the Greeks took over for them. The Romans after that. Now, Julius Caesar was trying to prevent them coming in. He was trying to re- maintain a republic in a way. But he's out conquering a lot of other people out there to try and protect the Roman Empire. but he wanted to stay with a non-usury monetary system because he saw how it was destroying the Roman Empire. That's why he got killed by uh, Brutus and cohorts because they were the bankers. So were the, Phil- the Philistines, it's kind of evident that they were probably left over from Atlantis, huh? It doesn't make any difference. They were basically the next one in line. The Medes, Persians, the Philistines. Uh, you had the uh, Polynesians out here way before them. That's why a lot of gold and silver, one of uh, King Solomon's gold mines, is located uh, primarily down in uh, uh, Indonesia. A lot of the gold wealth that basically he'd accumulated. Mm -hmm. Just like Fort Knox is one of King Solomon's gold mines. There was trade worldwide long time even Jesus came over here because he came on over on boats that were supplied by his 
uh, uh, stepfather. who was a traitor of ten out of England. But he also made excursions over to America. But you'll never see that in the damn Bible. You've got to read other history books. Okay, no questions. No, we got to study more. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> review it between now and Wednesday or Friday. No, it's Friday. Friday, right? Yes, this Friday. This week is uh, Friday again. Because yeah. you ought to be out there is... putting some of this shit into work. Right. Okay. Right. You got right. enough information here to s- throw something on a damn certificate of live birth or whatever, and try and get some money. Yes. I want to hear on. people on Friday night's call coming back and say, hey, this thing works. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Patrick. That, that, that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to grab my birth. I got my birth certificate on hand, and um, this is Ray, by the way. Uh, since I am in a position where I actually need to get started, I'll probably put them into the bank tomorrow my obit bond for them to um, transfer some of the funds to me. So I'll probably have a, a answer for you're, you. You're in before. Seattle, aren't you? Yes, right. I am. Okay. Isn't Seattle one of the federal district courthouses? Yes, District 18. Yeah. Why don't you write, go right down there? Take it for $10,000. Take it into them, to the cashier, to the clerk of the court. Now that's better than the stupid bank you owe three thousand dollars to. Well, I had a I had understood that before you become free, you have to pay your debt. But your I have mm-hmm. the terminology on the documents saying that hey, they take that out. Right, salvage. And really, you don't owe any debt. They owe everything to you. They're the any debt is obligate is an obligation of them to settle the debt. Perfect. Uh, well, I got my birth certificate. I'll be doing something with it this week, and I'll go over the call. But I will yeah, have okay. an answer for you, whether it be the bank or uh, the court. It's going to be one of the two, but we've got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Ray. Yeah, Ray. Listen to that. Deal from uh, Bill Turner, okay? I'll he has some right. shit that's right on there, okay? He's a little uh, off on some of it, and he even states that he's a little off, okay? Patrick. But he's trying. Yes, he is. Uh, Patrick, I don't know where to actually go, and I don't always have access to a computer. Thanks to a friend of mine, right now I have access. But okay. the majority of the time, I don't have access to anything. So it's only predetermined times when I ask a person that if they can be at their house or I can be there, that I can get the time to use it. So okay. I'm very limited in the position that I'm in, especially being homeless. Yeah. So well, I, try and get uh, this in and uh, if nothing else, get a uh, – did you have a uh, DD-214? No, because I was raised outside of the country. I was adopted in Mexico. Okay. So basically, when I come back, I just basically, four years ago, I found, uh, in 2012, I found my family, which my mother, my father, uh, I passed away. I found a brother of, a brother and a sister. But there's stuff that I have not known for the last 50 years, so I'm pretty much coming to grips with a lot of stuff real quick. Yeah, well, that's the thing. They hid this away from us too damn well. And see, basically, nobody ever thought about being a peon, but yet in grade school and different things, you're always called a little peon. Well, a little peon is basically a debtor to their parents. 
Okay. Yeah, see, as a child, you owed a debt to your parents because your parents were taking care of you. I understand. So you that. were in a involuntary servitude to your parents until you came of age. Yeah, the only, the, as to what we were talking about, the only thing that I have is, and this is my question because mine is a, I'm in a special situation. And since I did come from another country, okay, um, the bonds that we're talking to, I before I changed my name, I've had several other names. Will they actually, the court, go after and look into those names to see what was created under it? If you've got documentation, supply that to them uh, to uh, help the situation. But if you've got a certificate of live birth uh, under a state seal here in this country, yes, I do. that should be it. I got that. And I got the social security number, but I don't happen to have an ID to go with it. Well, then basically you're probably not going to get into that courthouse. Uh, that's why I was going to try the bank. You're not going to get into a bank either unless you've got an ID. Well, the a bank the ID, ID that I have is a world passport with my name on it. But okay, many you can see if the, if the court will take that. I don't think the banks will take it. Okay. Okay. But okay. You well, can try. Okay. I'm gonna give That's, it a try. That's all okay. I can do. On top of it, like I said, I'm very limited on resources. I I eat on two dollars a day, so. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hey Patrick, okay. uh, I kind of forgot what the when you when you take the R and the S out of person and it becomes P on. What does the R and the S represent again? Well, if you look it up in Oxford Universal Dictionary, R dot S dot stood for Royal Service. Okay. Or Royal Sovereign. Okay. Okay. And then also here in America it would be residentiary sovereign. Okay. Okay, see you are a resident, so you are royal here in this country. Right. Same thing that you were talking about, royalty, Amer- I can, I am an American. Yeah. Okay. You're the prince of the land. Okay, it's all, it's, it's seeming to fit in. I'm having a to- uh, big, big uh, problem grasping with a lot of things because I am not, I, my first language is not English. My uh-huh. first language is Spanish. My second language is Russian. And my third language is Hebrew. Well, you're a messed up case, aren't you? Yeah. (laughs) uh, Don't have any Japanese or Chinese in there. (laughs) I wish I would. That would give me a job out real quick. But, yeah, I only came to the United States uh, about 23 years ago looking for my family, and now I found them. So, for my real family. All right. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'll let you go now. Okay. You take care. Thank you. Goodbye. What? Okay. Go ahead and uh, I'm off here, Tom. Okay. Wrap it up. Right. We'll have a call on Friday, but we've got uh, plenty of time now to to apply what we've uh, talked about tonight. Right. And I'm I'm going to be out doing it myself. Okay. Can you post the call pretty soon, too? Please. I'll turn it, I'll turn it off now.